Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter, and this is episode number 133 for September the 21st, 2021, and welcome to the episode. So, exciting news, I'm supposed to get my long arm. Well, I was supposed to get my long arm on Monday, that was yesterday, it didn't come. They changed the date to today, Tuesday, now it's been changed again till tomorrow. It's sitting in Buffalo, New York, waiting to come across the border, I guess. I don't know what the holdup is. We've done all the paperwork and everything like that. Sorry, I see my camera's jiggling a little bit. I got to be careful. Um, I guess it just have to wait. Um, I'm not that worried about it. Actually, coming tomorrow would be a better day anyways. Monday was a busy day. Today is a busy day. So, yeah, um, watch. It'll probably show up on Friday when I'm going to start the retreat and more about the retreat in a minute. But we are ready for it to arrive. We've got the uh, room all set up and ready to go, all cleaned out. We're pretty sore after all of that, but I'm happy with the end result. And um, I'm sure it's going to be worth it all uh, when the long arm arrives. Now, the only thing I'm a little apprehensive about, but from what I've seen on YouTube and what I've heard from other people who own long arms, some assembly is required. Um, it comes in seven boxes, apparently, and it takes about two and a half to three hours for two people to get it all put together. But it comes with a really extensive manual for doing that. And from what I have heard, um, it's not that difficult. So we shall see. So it would be nice if the long arm was here. We had it all set up before the retreat this weekend. So I could do a little special show of what it looks like in the whole bit but i'm not really expecting that i'll be able to do that but we'll see but what i can show you is what the room looks like uh that we're going to put the uh lucy that's what the name of this particular long arm is from apqs we call it juicy lucy um what the room is going to look like uh that it's going into so i'm going to insert that little video clip right here okay so here's where the long arm is going to go. This used to be my sewing room in here. It is now all cleaned out. You can see the treadmill that was in here folded up in the corner is all gone as well. Now I've left my paints and things on these shelves because they won't interfere with the long arm. And uh, we're just keeping a few of these things. We don't know what we're going to need as far as drawers and that. And a lot of these could fit underneath the long arm, we think. But we're just hanging on to those for now. Now, I have a pile of tables here, which I'm not getting rid of, but I'm hoping that they'll be able to stay in this area as well. So as we look around the room, this half was Walter's workshop. And you can see the table saw is gone. And he's cleaned up all of this area here. He still has his workbench to clean up as well. Um, the fridge will stay here. Um, because we think we've done some measurements and there's enough clearance for it so that we can get into it uh, when the long arm is in here. And this filing cabinet will probably stay as well. Um, on the floor, we've taken up any carpet that was in here. I had a big area rug here uh, in my sewing area. We've taken that, we've rolled it up. It's actually over there in the corner. We're hanging on to it for now, um, but we felt that the concrete floor would be better for leveling uh, the long arm as well. And then we're going to look into getting some cushioned types of mats, sort of industrial uh, strength ones uh, for standing on when we're quilting because this floor can get really cold and it's not that comfortable if you're standing for long periods of time. So this is what the area is looking like. It is ready for the Lucy. And she arrives right now, as far as we know, on Monday. So as you can see, we are ready with the space. Now, have I run into any problems with this, beside the fact that I'm not absolutely sure when it's coming? Not really. The whole process has been very, very smooth. Um, now, we did discuss this on Stephen and Walter Live on Sunday and talked about uh, everything that we have experienced to date with ordering the long arm and for the most part it has gone snag free except for the fact that it uh visa which is my credit card that i paid for it on um 
didn't authorize the transaction. I think I discussed this in detail on uh, the vlog, but uh, just a quickie. Uh, basically, I phoned Visa beforehand to let them know that this huge charge in American dollars was coming onto my credit card. I did that because I didn't want it to get blocked as if it was a fraudulent kind of thing. And uh, I phoned them. They said, okay, thank you for letting us know. They typed away on a computer and put that information in and everything was ready to go. Then when I went to pay for the long arm, the transaction was rejected. Yes, of course it was. Um, so I had to call Visa again and found out that whoever took the information put it all in the wrong spot in their computer files. And so security had shut me down. Nice. I had to go into a branch of the bank. It's the Royal Bank of Canada. Horrible bank to deal with. I will never deal with them. I haven't for years. I got rid of that bank years ago. I used to deal with them because they were horrible then. And when I say horrible, I mean like over 30 years ago, I got rid of my accounts from that bank because they're just stupid. But then most banks are, I guess. So anyways, I digress. Um, I went into a local branch. Luckily, there was one about a kilometer away from me. So no big deal. Went in. Was the first customer of the day because I got there just before it opened. And we got it all sorted out. And the person looking after me, he seemed to be a little frustrated with Visa as well. It was like, this is not unusual. I had this problem before. So anyways, got it all sorted out, got the payment through. And after that, everything else went along quite smoothly. So last stage of this journey uh, of getting it is actually getting it here. And as I said, it comes in seven boxes. Now, there was some mention that the heaviest of the seven boxes is 120 pounds. So uh, we're old men. <laughs> Hopefully we can get it downstairs uh, by ourselves. Um, I know just done it, just get it done quilts. Karen Brown, she got one from APQS as well. And she um, uh, got it off the truck and moved it into her spot all on her own. Now, mind you, she did have a little cart with wheels on it. And I don't think she had to go downstairs. So we'll make it. We, we've taken things that are heavy out of here before. Damn near killed us, but we'll, we can do it. Anyways, yeah, that's the new adventure. Um, someone asked me in a comment the other day or on Stephen and Walter Live if I was uh, had some anxiety about this. Uh, yes and no. I'm a little anxious about when it arrives. Um, I'm excited to get it together and get started working with it. I'm a little anxious about the assembly process, but as I said, I've been assured from many sources that it's pretty easy. I mean, after all, I've put together 3D printers from scratch. How hard can this be? Right? Um, and then there's the learning curve, learning how to use it. Um, I'm not worried about that. Uh, I have great support here in my area uh, through Whirls and Swirls with Tracy Russell. You can check out her YouTube channel. Just uh, do a search for Whirls and Swirls. And uh, she's excellent. And there's already, uh, there's a free course that comes along with the long arm with Tracy. Um, that's a whole day course that allows you to play on her Lucy. She has several different models because she has a long arm business. And uh, she talks about maintenance and tips and tricks and things like that with it all. Now, we've taken a couple of courses with Tracy, Tracy before. This is not our first rodeo on a long arm. Uh, we don't have extensive knowledge of how to use a long arm, but we have used it a couple of times. We've rented time on Tracy's long arms to do some quilts. So I've already have some experience. I kind of know what to expect, but I'm sure there's always a few little surprises um, and thus the learning curve. So anyways, maybe by this time next week, I'll have a Juicy Lucy to show you. Okay, so that takes me to the demo of the week. And as you know, I've been setting up my sewing room. I'm very pleased with how it has turned out. I'm still doing some fine tuning. You know, uh, you put things in drawers uh, and then you start to use things and you realize mm, it would be more convenient to have that in a different drawer. So I'm still working on that. As I get back into working on my projects and things, I have been relocating certain things in drawers to make them more convenient. 
Um, but one of the things that I'm really happy about that I have now is I have decent fabric storage and I can see all my fabrics that I own before they were tucked in baskets and in drawers and I really didn't know what I had in my stash and when it came to picking out fabrics for a project from my stash it wasn't very convenient and it wasn't a lot of fun to do it because you had to open and close drawers pull out baskets and things like that now I have my largest pieces of fabric which are usually a meter and up all nicely folded on display on a bookcase that formerly held my crafting supplies and now at a glance I can see what I have and I can go and shop my stash but I thought I'd show you a little video of how I organize that how I fold the fabric so it would fit on the shelf so I've made that video and I'm going to insert it right here Today I thought I'd talk about how I store my fabric. Now you know that recently I've changed my sewing room and moved it into my craft room, which is now my sewing room. And uh, these shelves used to hold all my crafting supplies, but now they hold a lot of my fabric. And the way that I do this is, well, first of all, I want them put out on exposed shelves because I don't know what I have. When they're tucked away in a drawer somewhere or in a box, I can't see what I've got and I end up buying more fabric than I need. Now, that's not always a bad thing because I like having a good stash of fabric, but now I know exactly what I have at a glance. So what you can see on these, this top two shelves is folded fabric. Most of the pieces that are up here are anywhere from one to two, three meters of fabric and the way I fold them is I take the fabric out and I fold it from salvage to salvage double it over and then I take a short little ruler and I'll show you what I mean if I've got one sitting here and I don't but let's say this was the ruler I have one that's a little fatter than this and I just lay that down on top of the fabric and just use it as a guide for folding the fabric so I get everything a uniform size um, and if you don't know what I mean, um, you can find lots of videos about folding fabric and many of them use this technique. That's where I learned it. So all the fabric is standing up on its edge and I do clip it. I bought some of those little plastic clips that you find when you buy a shirt, uh, a dress shirt, and they usually use these little plastic clips to, uh, adhere the shirt to the cardboard stay. Um, I bought a package of 200 of those from Amazon. I need to buy some more actually. And uh, I just clip them on the top and the bottom and it keeps everything very neat. And in some cases I use binder clips uh, because I ran out of those little plastic clips. As I said, I need to buy some more. So I can see all my fabric here, but not everything fits that neatly on the shelf. So if you look down here, there's some little blue baskets and these have smaller pieces of fabric. Uh, you know, they're maybe the size of a fat quarter, slightly bigger. And I just fold those and put them in the basket so that the fold edge is on the outside and I can see what I have a little better. Now here's an example of what I'm talking about. Now, I also have little blue baskets like this in the drawers of my sewing table um, for scraps, large scraps. Uh, not little bitty pieces, not crumbs, but large scraps that I can actually fold that are maybe slightly smaller than a fat quarter. And I do the same thing with them. I fold them this way, put the uh, folded edge up so I at a glance can see what I have in terms of color and that kind of thing. There are some drawers down here that are marked as fat quarters because fat quarters are already come neatly folded and I am a sucker for fat quarters. I keep them in these little drawers all labeled as such. So that's how I store my fabric. And uh, yeah, it, you know, you do have to keep it neat. Um, and so, you know, it just kind of forces you to keep things neat because, you know, it looks nice. It's part of the decor. Fabric is beautiful. So I am enjoying uh, my new setup. Now, one other thing I have found is um, the other day I was doing some sewing, uh, putting some binding on some table toppers for Christmas, and I had my sewing stool. That's what's down at the far end uh, next to my sewing machine. And it's the stool that I used in the old sewing room too. But when I got up from it, and I hadn't been there that long, a couple of hours, 
my back was sore. And Walter had been complaining about that too, because uh, on one of the Stephen and Walter lives, he actually used that stool to sit on while we did it. And uh, he complained about his back uh, really feeling sore after he got off that stool. Well, the biggest problem is back support. Now, the chair I'm sitting in right now, this office chair, has back support, but it won't fit in that area where my sewing machine is. And that's one reason why I'm still using the stool. But I thought, you know, I sit there for long periods of time and you should get up and stretch on a regular basis. Uh, but, you know, you get involved with a project and you don't end up doing that. And then you pay for it with your back. At least you do when you get to a certain age. My age. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't need to be reminded that I'm getting up there in years uh, with having a back pain. So I went on Amazon and I found a stool with a back, a back support that will fit. I'm pretty sure I read their measurements. I measured my existing one and it should fit in that spot without any problem. And I'm hoping that solves the problem. It would be nice to have a nice sewing uh, chair, but I just can't get one in that particular space. Now, yes, behind me is my embroidery machine and I could switch the machines out. But the reason I'm not going to do that is because if I do a Zoom, all of my stuff for doing my Zoom is at this end of the room. And if I'm watching videos, there's a TV set, set up in this corner. If I'm watching the TV, if I'm watching a Zoom or I'm watching a YouTube video or whatever, um, my back would be to that if I had the sewing machine sitting here. So that's why it's down at the other end. So I can face that. And I really can't rearrange any of the stuff in the room. Well, I could, but it's another major, major, basically renovation in order to do that. And I'm really not prepared at this point in time to do it. So I'm hoping my solution to the problem will be this backed stool that I have bought. I'll let you know. It's supposed to come today, actually. So something to look forward to. You know what I always say, a day without an Amazon delivery is a day without sunshine. Yeah. So moving on, it's time to do the subscribers quilt of the week. And this is not a quilt. It is a painting. And you know, I like to feature not only quilts on this channel, but anything that people have created. Um, so keep that in mind if you want to send me some pictures I uh, want me to feature you. I will accept garments, quilts, paintings, mixed media, art journaling, whatever, knitting, crocheting. Send me a picture. Send me a brief description of what the item is, and I'll feature you here on The Idiot Quilter. Because after all, it may say The Idiot Quilter, but it's maybe I should broaden it to The Idiot Crafter. Well, I'm not going to change that because I like the title already, but, and you're used to it, but it's open to anything that you create. So here's Judith Letson's lovely painting. This week's subscribers quilt is not a quilt at all, but a painting. And you know, I like to show not just quilts, but people's artwork. And this one is stunning. This is by Judith Letson. And she says, hi, Stephen, attached is my newest painting. I haven't even signed it as I was finishing it this morning before the Zoom. She's referring to uh, the last month's uh, craft and chat. Enjoyed doing this painting and now off to the next one. So yeah, Judith, this is really, really nice. And you know, I like the way that you've set it up with a quilt in the background as well. Um, but it looks very realistic. When I first looked at it, I thought those were that was an actual set of, of curtains. Um, but it's, it's a lovely painting. I wish I could do something like that. So thank you, Judith, for sharing that with us. I just wish I could paint like that. I really do. Of course, I gave away all my supplies. So now I have nothing to paint with. Oh, well, back to quilting. Okay. So that takes me to the contacts or the, uh, list of resources this week. They're in the show notes. Of course, you see, there is a plea in there for, uh, features uh, for pictures of your creations. I've already talked about that, but I'm also looking for interviews. I have a new interview going up this week. I have one next week, and I'm hoping I have one for the week after that. But after that, I'm out of interviews. So come on, you know the drill. Okay, there is a link to this weekend's uh, Idiot Quilter Retreat. 
There's an FAQ link, as I've told you before. You just click on that. It gives you all the details about the retreat. There is a Zoom link to the Icebreaker Cocktail Party uh, on the Friday night, September 24th, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And there's a link to the retreat itself uh, that starts at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time on Saturday, September the 25th. All are welcome. And right now I have a little over 40 people that have told me they wish to attend. So based on that, I still have lots of room. I can handle up to 95. You can come and go as you please. Um, but one thing I will tell you, uh, when I do the draws, which will be throughout the day for prizes, uh, you must be present when I make the draw. If your name is drawn and you're not there, I'm sorry no prize for you <laughs> okay no soup for you some of you will not understand that reference um so it should be a lot of fun the icebreaker we're going to play games we bring something to show people for a show and share it's just going to be a lot of fun and i hope you'll be able to join us you're also going to find uh, a link to this week's interview with two fascinating ladies who are both mechanical engineers and their professors at university. Now, you might find that kind of strange that these two ladies with that kind of education level are quilters. Hmm, not really. Think about it. Mechanical engineering, how much mathematics do we use in quilt making? A lot. So I imagine they're very good at writing patterns, but they were very interesting. And I have never done a interview where I interviewed two people at the same time. So that in itself makes it unique. So be sure to check that out. The link is below. There's also a link to the latest So Chatty. That was episode 26, Purchasing a Long Arm. Um, and we talked a little bit all the, about the ins and outs of that. And there is a link to the... Uh, pattern of the week and to the online fabric store of the week and actually this week the online fabric store I've actually physically been to it was some time ago pre-covid days okay so that takes me to the YouTube channel of the week now this is one that I go to every now and then it's actually um, bits and pieces that come from a public broadcasting station. It's called KS Production TV, and they deal with a lot of arts and crafts kind of programming. And they do have a series about quilting, which I find very interesting. And I think if you're a beginner, you'll find it even more interesting. So I have a little video clip I'm going to insert right here to talk about that. This week's YouTube channel of the week is called KS Productions TV. This is a public broadcast station that you can, might actually be able to get on your cable subscription. But if you can't, you can go here to see some of their shows. And they have quite a few shows for both quilters, sewers, and crafters. As you can see here, they have something called It's So Easy, where they talk about various sewing techniques uh, for various projects. We have Fresh Quilting, which has a whole lot of videos in their playlist uh, on a variety of topics related to quilting. And they have Make It Artsy with uh, Julie Fafé Bolzer, who's been around for a long time and is very popular in the uh, art journaling and mixed media community. And then if you're into things like beads, babbles, and jewels, well, they have something here for you as well. Um, and further on, uh, they have crafts for kids too, and scrapbook soup. So if you're a scrapbooker, there's lots there. So really, there is quite a bit on this YouTube channel for those of you that like to create. So check out KS Productions TV. So that takes me to one of the patterns I have hanging on my uh, vision board. It is one that comes from the Fat Quarter Shop. Uh, I have not made it yet. I was thinking this would make a really neat Christmas table topper. I don't know if I'll get to it before Christmas, but you could make this out of any fabric. And it's called a Swirling Star Table Topper. And I have a little uh, review of that that I'll insert here. This week's pattern that someday I want to attempt to make is called the Swirling Star Table Topper. And this is by someone called Krista Moser, uh, The Quilted Life. Now, what I'm showing you here is where you can get this pattern free. 
It's a free download from the Fat Quarter Shop. Now, I did go to the Krista Moser site and look for this pattern, and I could not find it. Now, the one thing about this pattern, though, that you need to also purchase to be able to make this is, and if you look right here, it tells you, this pattern is designed to work with the ruler instructions that come with the Creative Grids 60-degree diamond ruler. And I did buy that ruler, but I have not yet made this pattern. So if we look down, it gives you the fabric requirements. It says you need six red fabrics. You could do this in any color you want. You need six blue fabrics, one fat quarter, a blue accent fabric, and then strips for binding on this. But the real secret to making this comes with using that 60 degree diamond ruler. Now, if we go down a little bit further on the Fat Quarter website, it says this pattern is designed to work with the ruler instructions that come with the Creative Grid 60 degree diamond ruler. Um, so, yeah. And there looks like there is a link to a video. Let's just check this out for a second and see if this will let us look into that. And it is not letting us hook into that. Um, oh wait, here we go. There it is, right there. Oops, get that out of the way. So here they have a little video showing you how to do this. Let's just watch a little moment of it. Hey everyone, Krista Moser here, designer of the Creative Grid 60 Degree Diamond Roller. I'm here at Fat Quarter Shop today and I'm going to show you some of the cuts that this roller does to make what's behind me. Swirly Star Table Topper. You just use your six different shades of gray, six different shades of green, and then you've got some background stuff. So I'll show you what to do to get your um, really dramatic color changes from just some cuts that we did from some cuts. Okay, so that's good to know that they also have that video link to it. So I will definitely be referring to that when I get around to making this particular pattern. Again, this is one that appeals to me because I like stars. And I think it would make a really neat uh, table topper uh, out of Christmas fabrics. But we'll see. I have a lot of Christmas uh, patterns that I want to try out, as you know. But do I have enough time? I don't know. We'll see. So that's called the Swirling Star Table Topper by Krista Moser. So I mentioned already that I have a fascinating interview with two very fascinating ladies. And I'm just going to give you a little preview of what that's all about. So I've had this thing going on for years. And um, I sewed when I was in college. Uh, I, was, I went to engineering school and I was sewing. And then I kind of slowed down, um, got a job at a nuclear power plant, got married. I still made some stuff. My husband bought me a faff sewing machine. <laughs> he told me to make him a shirt. I never did. <laughs> but never a shirt. So I went ahead and um, I did all that. And, and then life got really crazy. One of my goals was to become a professor one day and help students transition from school to their engineering career. So I needed to climb the corporate ladder, which I did. I did a lot of different things, a lot of different industries. And then I quit my job and I went back and I got, I had to get a doctorate to be able to go teach. So that's what I did. And all of my sewing has been sitting on the side in boxes all this time, right? So we move, I get tenure and those boxes started to open. We have a three car garage and over the three car garage, is my sewing room. Oh. And so I have all my, all, all but two machines are out. The two I need to fix them. They're old singers. They're almost featherweights, not quite. Um, so I'd have some motor work to do and stuff like that on there. But I've, I've got this playroom and um, I go play in it. And it, it's been great fun. I make all kinds of things now. So I'm back at it. Wow. To, um, that's amazing that, you know, that you, you have a, a whole different career from, um, you know, what you, you started out with and, and like an engineer, really, that's, that's impressive. An engineer for that kind of thing. And then into sewing, but then again, quilting too, is very mathematical as yes. is engineering. So I can see the relationship. So Diane, I know you're also, uh, trained as an engineer as well, according to your bio yes. so what's 
first of all, what's your full name? Where are you located? Okay. And okay. give us your bio. My name is Diane Peters, and uh, I'm located in Flint, Michigan. I, uh, I teach at Kettering University, a, a small private university in Flint. Um, my background is in some ways similar to Anne's, in some ways different. I didn't have the experiences with somebody ripping out my stitches. And I'm actually the one who got my mom into quilting. So that takes me to one of my quilts. Uh, this is a scrap quilt uh, I made some time ago. I call it the vintage scrap quilt. And I believed I made it from the leftovers that I had from uh, one of the quilts that I made for a friend of mine. Um, and it, you know, I love to make scrap quilts. And um, yeah, not only is it a great way to, uh, to, you know, use up your scraps, but it's also a chance for you to design something that's unique. So I'm going to show you that right here. The quilt I want to critique this week that comes from my collection, I entitled Vintage Scraps because it is a scrap quilt. And you know how I love to use up my scraps and make them into original designs. So this is what this one is. And I just was playing around with flying geese on this particular quilt and uh, some border treatments as well. And a lot of this was just picked at random except for the sashing. I tried to keep it pretty much consistent all the way around. Um, I did use a, an outside border as well from another leftover bit of fabric and I think this might be a Tim Holtz fabric that's here. In fact many of the fabrics in this could be Tim Holtz. Now when it comes to actually doing um, and I'm just going to try and blow this up and I can't. So there we go. Um, the quilting I've done in this, and this picture isn't very good of it, uh, looks like I probably just did stitch in the ditch and maybe some walking foot uh, wavy line quilting. I really can't see it that well in this picture. So I think it turned out pretty good. It's a bit on the rustic side. The colors do work together um, and it does look a little distorted, but that's more the picture than the quilt itself. At least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So this is one made from scraps called Vintage Scraps Quilt. And that takes us to the online fabric store of the week. And I've already mentioned that this is one I've actually physically been to. It's called, now I'm going to butcher the name because I'm not sure how you say it at all. I want to say that it is High Heiglit Fabrics. I am probably completely wrong about that. But this uh, fabric store I went to a couple of years ago before uh, COVID. It's in the um, area in around, uh, well, it's what, uh, west of us by a couple of hours. Um, it's in a place called St. Mary's, little tiny community. And uh, it's a great store, especially if you love Cafe Facet fabrics. And I do. They had the largest collection I've ever seen anywhere. Um, their prices are pretty reasonable too, but I did go to their, uh, website and check them out. And so here's my review. This week's online quilt store is called, and I don't know if I'm going to say this correctly, Higlet Fabrics. And I have actually been to their store. It is located in St. Mary's, Ontario, Canada, and it is a great store if you really love Cafe Facet fabrics which I do. So let's just examine their uh, store shall we? So here we have right on the first page we have all kinds of uh, facet fabrics and it looks like they sell by the yard not by the meter. You know how I feel about that in Canada but it's eight dollars a half yard so sixteen dollars a yard and that's not a bad price. They show new products on their front page as well. They have some of his books um, and then they have their info at the bottom where they're located and who you can call if you want to make an appointment because it looks like they say they are open but they have curbside uh, pickup until further notice. Uh, at the time that I'm recording this, uh, mo we are not in lockdown, but uh, that's not to say that there's not certain restrictions and uh, things 
to be taken. And since if you're going to make the trip to their actual store, you might want to check that out. So let's take a look at their fabric. And here we are. Now off to the side, they have K Facet Collective, Oakshot, they sell Tula Pink, Liberty London. They have wide backs, someone called Anna Marie Horner. I don't know that person. And then more fabrics. And it looks like you can shop by price range as well, which is kind of nice. Um, so let's just take a look. I know all about K Facet, most people do, but I've never heard of this one. So let's go to Anna Marie Horner and see what her fabrics look like. Uh, sort of a combination between Tula Pink and uh, K Facet is my first reaction. Very pretty, nice prints. And again, it's uh, $16 a yard. Okay, let's just go back and take a look at more fabrics and see what we have here. So is this the entire collection that they have? Uh, no, it looks like they also have something called Yoko Sato Box Yoko's Baskets. Um, I guess that's sort of a, a, a boxed set of fabrics. Um, now these ones are fairly inexpensive, uh, 498 a half yard for what read as solids, PBS, uh, lapis, red violet. I'm not sure, uh, what that is. I've not heard of that brand before, but anyways, they have quite a few. They have Moda, Grunge, call it, uh, cotton solids, painter's palette. So lots here, linen as well. So let's take a look at what they're selling for threads. And they're doing Wonderfill. And Ifina. That's a brand I'm not familiar with. And it looks like they have, though, quite a bit to choose from. Let's check out tools. I'm expecting here that they have the, the usual standard kind of things. Um, looks like they uh, sell upgrades for Bernina. I'm not sure if they sell sewing machines or not. We'll have to look into that. Yeah, and they have the usual kind of things on here. Um, I don't see anything that lists uh, sewing machines. They do have Bernina listed here, but I think that's just tools. Yeah, so if you want Bernina feet and things like that, um, you can get that. But it doesn't look like they actually sell the sewing machines. Um, oh, let's just go down to this menu on the side. They have these menus on the side that are easy to miss, but you should check it out. Yeah, it doesn't look like they sell the actual sewing machines, but they do sell um, accessories. They do have ruler work tools. And Amanda Murphy, not familiar with that, don't seem to have a lot in that line. Hits and patterns in books. And what do we have? Some interesting things here. Uh, more books than kits. And yeah, a lot of K-Facet uh, related products, as you would expect. And they have more pages too. So um, let's just take a look at About Us. And they list, they have the largest selection of K-Facet Collective. And they do. I've been to that store. And as I said, if you're into K-Facet, you're going to love this store. Um, and yep, they have all of their material. Uh, these people, I did meet uh, some of these people in here. All three of them, actually. I saw them in the store when I was there a couple of years ago. All very helpful, very friendly people. And I believe they had one section of the store that had uh, a long arm set up in it. And I think they do custom long arming. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think they do. Okay, and it looks like they have gift certificates as well. So, 
I would say that definitely go to their website if you're interested in a K facet fabrics especially but they did have the Liberty of London ones which tend to be a uh, sort of pricey um, and not as easy to get so check out Piglet I'm not sure if I'm saying that right fabrics so that brings us to the end of this week's episode of the Idiot Quilter. And just again, a reminder that coming this weekend, September 24th and 25th, is the big Idiot Quilter retreat. Uh, I hope to see many of you there. Even if you can't come for the full day, that's not a problem. Um, it would be just nice for you to pop in. Uh, but it's a chance for you, as I said, to have a day where you can get caught up on some of your projects. And even though I've kind of called it... Uh, getting ahead for Christmas, you can work out anything you want. Of course you can. Um, but it should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm basing my experience, uh, my ideas from the experience that I had with the one I ran in the spring. And that was fantastic as far as I was concerned. And lots of other people uh, wrote to me and said they had a really good time and were looking forward to the next one. So I hope that this one goes as well, and it should. I've got lots of things planned. For those of you who have already told me that you are coming, I am sending out tomorrow the agenda uh, for the day. Um, so you'll know what things I'm presenting and the timeline for everything. Um, I'm trying not to, uh, to fill the day up with too many extraneous things because it is a day for you to get caught up on your projects. But I am breaking it up a little bit with a few short little uh, presentations. And of course, I have a live presentation from Lori uh, Rimmon, who is uh, one of the interviews I did uh, a few weeks ago. And if you didn't see that interview, you should check it out because she's another fascinating individual who designs very unique acrylic templates for uh, making uh, bags and other things and you can't get those templates any place else and she makes them herself she has a laser cutter for cutting the acrylic um, and so she will be doing a short presentation as well and she has generously uh, donated four gift certificates for her products so you don't want to miss that so I hope you'll be able to join us then and I hope you'll be able to join me next week for the next issue of The Idiot Quilter. And hopefully I will have Juicy Lucy to present to you. So have a great week. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay creative. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.